Hey guys, welcome back to the last video of this particular course. So in this video, we are going to talk about the pipeline in Jenkins. So basically, we'll know what exactly the pipeline is. We'll see how to implement the pipeline. And also, we'll talk about the upstreams and downstreams. Now, these all concepts, what I'm talking about, basically, we are going to use this in real time. So it's necessary to know how to implement them, how to use them, and what exactly they are doing. Why is it needed? All is needed to know. So let's talk about the pipeline in Jenkins. So basically, in Jenkins pipeline is a continuous deliv uh, delivery pipelines into Jenkins. A continuous de delivery pipeline is an automated expression of your process for getting software from version control right through your users and customers. So basically, this pipeline, you can say this plugin supports implementing both the uh, uh, delivery of pipelines into Jenkins. Now, a pipeline is typically divided into multiple stage and steps with each steps integrating a single task and each ta stage grouping together similarly steps. For example, you have build, test, and deployment stage in your pipeline. So you can also run existing job with a pipeline. So now you see the main concept of pipeline. What exactly the main concept of pipeline is? That here we are trying to stage the different phase of the test cases. Like one phase is build, next is test, and the last is deploy. So if you want to execute or if you want to write the codes in all the three stages, or you want to see the executions in all three stages, you can do this through pipeline. That's the main concept. So we write the script separately where we have a separate section for build. We have a separate section for test and separate for deploy. Now it depends on that if all three are needed or just what is needed, just write that in the script and accordingly the pipeline will work. So I hope the concept is clear. Now we'll see the implementation in real time. So now here I'm going to create a new item. And in this, I will say pipeline for e-commerce. Yeah. Now here, if you're creating a pipeline, you need to click the pipeline option. So you see for every execution, we are selecting the different ex options. Here I'm selecting the pipeline op options. Now, straight away, I'll go to the pipeline section. Now, here we have two options. Either go with pipeline scripts from SCM. Now, pipeline scripts from SCM means that based on the uh, GitHub execution. So basically, all these details will be like you pass the GitHub details, the repository, the credentials. Again, at the end, uh, you have to pass this. And there you have to write a Jenkins file. So in your GitHub, Basically, you say in your GitHub, you need to add one Jenkins files. And in this Jenkins files, you will write the script. So that instead of reading, so script, what exactly the script will be like, I'll tell you. So here I change this option from to pipeline script. And here you see in the right side, you have these options that do you want to run a simple pipeline code? Do you want to write a GitHub code plus Maven? So this is the one, GitHub plus Maven. So this script, what you see that comes by default here, this script you have to write separately and put it here in the GitHub so that when you run this code straight away, it reads the Jenkins file from here. So now these are two different ways of doing one is like you can say uh, there are two different types of pipeline. One is script pipeline and other one is declarative pipeline. So both has its own uses. So I'm just using a simple way and I'm doing in the most the simplest format you can. So it makes things easier. Now you can do the scriptings in multiple ways you want, but I'm doing the most simplest way I can do. Okay. Now you see, you don't need to write the scripts. Usually we have that thing that how will I write the scripts, how the uh, curly braces will go, all of this. So it's very simple. Just select that option, Git plus Maven. So it's quite clear that you are trying to run a code in pipeline with Git plus Maven execution. Now you see the stages. So here by default, I have one stage that is build stage. So now this code will work accordingly. And once the build is success, now here you can add as many as stages you want. You can add a stage. Now, basically, the stage means that when the code is at build stage, when the code is at deployment stage. So just maintain the stage and write the code or the steps, whatever the steps you want to execute inside it. That's all. Now, a few changes that you have to do here is now I'll do this thing in a new tab. So here, when you go to manage Jenkins, and if you remember before I talked about a maven 
that how we are configuring the Maven thing. So when you go here and you check the Maven section over here, then you find this name. So here I have given the name as Maven 1. Check in your case, what's the name of Maven? Copy that name. So I have copied the name as Maven 1. And here I'm passing it. See, it says installing the Maven configured as M3. So I will say no, it's like M Maven 1 in my case. Now stages, it says build stage. So in this build stage, basically I'll pass my GitHub link. Now I have this, this is my GitHub link. So I'll copy this GitHub link straight away. Go back and just paste the GitHub link. Now you know that this GitHub links, how it comes. I've already talked about the all of this in the last video. Now you see, you can do more changes if you want to do. If not, leave it as it is. And if you want to add any more steps, you can. I'm doing in the most simplest way. In future, if you want to add more scripts, you may add. I just save this after adding the GitHub link. Go to build now. And let's see how is it executing. Now it seems like it failed at some phase. Let's see what is the phase that it failed at. Everything was good, 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 good. Everything is good. So the system cannot specify. Let's see. OK, just I have to do small changes. Maybe it's saying that this directory, it's not reading that directory. So let me check this. Just let's get back here. Now, moving back to the configuration section, let's check what wrong we did that it's giving error. Oh, yes. You see here, this is the reason why I'm getting error. This line you see, now you have to read these lines. I missed this. It's good that I've done this error. At least you will notice this. Here it says Raven, run Maven on Unix agent. So right now I'm working on Windows. So I can't run this on the Unix one. So I have to just comment this. And the second one is to run Maven on Windows agent. So this is in Windows, the bat command works. So you know about this, uh, basically the bat command works. And if you are executing on Windows, then in that case, you have to allow this command, the bat command. So now this helps to work on Windows screen. So that's the story here. So if you are working on Windows, you have to keep in mind that uh, basically you will allow this section bat, this one, this command line. Now, let's save this and this time go to build now again. So this is executing. Let's see how it looks like. Let's see the console output. You see it's executing. It's executing the Maven part. Great. You see the complete program is working. Now let's wait for the complete thing to execute. That's working fine. So you see it says finish successful. Now if you go back to your build section and you see here, basically this is the difference. You see it says the timing, how much time it took to declare, uh, basically declarative tool installation. So how much time it took for the tool installation and how much time it took for the build. Now, if you add any more stages, those stages will be added over here. So what exactly you see here is, here you basically get the stages. You In pipeline, you will have all the stages, one after another, as many as stages you want. You'll get the stages basically here. That's all, that was the story of, this pipeline is all about okay so i hope the pipeline concept is clear i hope it's clear how we are using it now the second thing what we'll talk about is i was talking about the upstream and downstream so this is our e-commerce section i'll go to now again i'll open this so i'll apply upstream and downstream here so i'll apply this configure here and to this section as means i have already added here upstream and downstream Maybe I would have added it before, but still, let's do it again. Now, this is the section you see. Last time we have seen how we have scheduled things. 
now here if you want to add the upstream and downstream streams now here you see you have again few more things that you need to know is like you see this port step so if you want to execute a port step you if you want that only the port steps should execute that means the upstream and downstream these things should execute once your test is successful so just click this option run only if the build is successful that if it's not successful don't move to the next step so it will not so just if you have multiple options now if you explore github you have a lot of uh, if you explore this jenkins things you have a lot of things to go so just i'm going through some of the basic things or you can say the most uh, important thing or you can say the one that you you need to know at least as a beginner so here you see build after the project so here i'm going for it learn maven so i want that once this e-commerce is done once my project is executed i'll say it learn maven so after this trigger the it learn maven section so i click on this build after the projects are built so after this i want that straight away the second section should open so now this will open as the second option now here it says you have different options that it, do you want that the, uh, the second uh, project so trigger though if it's not in the stable state or it's in stable state it's an unstable state in all these options so i have selected the first one in my case i want the trigger only if the build is in stable stage because i want to go to the next section only when the first one is done so now i have done two changes here first one just have added the project second i have triggered that only if it's stable and the next one is here i said that only the post method will execute only when the build is success now i save this and I build now. So I've scheduled the build. So now first it will execute the one that's there. That's the e-commerce one. It will execute that. And the next project that we have added is this one, the IT Learn Maven project. We have added that. So now this one will execute. The e-commerce will execute first and see if everything goes fine. Then the second one will also get triggered. So what exactly we are doing here is now you see this one is done. Now let's get wait here. And here uh, let's wait for some time. That section will also execute the one that's there in downstream. So that will also come. So as you see in this build after projects are built, I have mentioned IT Learn Maven project. Now, as you have noticed that if I save and build now, then only the thing is that again, this e-commerce project will work. And also you see here in details, it's mentioned upstream is this. This is my upstream. In upstream, the project that I have added is IT Learn Maven. Now we will see the conf we'll see how we are executing this thing. Now I have run. So this is running the e-commerce project, the one that we have. So I have added this IT Learn project there. So you'll be expecting that after this, the IT Learn project will trigger. That's what expectation will be. But it's not going to be that. So it's not that after this, the IT Learn project will configure. It's like this is the IT Learn. You see, nothing is happening here. So we need to understand the flow here. You see go to this section where it says that okay it's censored so click on this now upstream project is it learn maven the downstream project is our e-commerce so the one that i've added that is my upstream project you need to understand this concept so this one is not triggered or this one is not built because my it learn 36 this it learn maven is my upstream project and the current project which we are working on that's my do, do, uh, downstream project. So this is the relation here. So in this case, when you will execute this one, that is IT Learn Maven project, when you will execute this and everything works fine here, then by itself, the e-commerce project will trigger. So you need to go and check the relation. Now, if you want that after e-commerce, the next thing should trigger. So just change the relation here. Make this e-commerce one as an upstream one and the other one as downstream. So you can do this. It's not that the structure will always remain the same but yeah here in this case you have to keep in mind that you have to check which one is your upstream and which one is your downstream project 
that's more important. So now this is your upstream. So this one, once everything executes fine, so it's executing the ITLN one that we have done before in the last project. So it's that project. We have already done this. So we have video on this as well, frameworks. So this one is executing with success. No problem. Now in build queue, you see we have e-commerce. That means the e-commerce is a downstream one. So this one executed fine. So now the next one will also execute. Now you see the e-commerce project. So this one's executed fine. Now it's executing the e-commerce one, you see? So this relation is very important to know that in which one is in upstream and which one is in downstream. See, second one triggers by itself. I have to do nothing. By itself, the second one is triggered. So now you'll say, see, this is two different projects I am working. When you are working in real time, you will get different modules to work on. So in your team members, you'll have different people working at different, different modules. So here we can connect all their works at one place using this upstream and downstream. So it's like if I'm a, one employee that I'm doing uh, working on the login module and other one is working on the registration one and you want to test both at the same time. So here you can set this upstream and downstream. So based on the definition, if upstream works fine, the downstream is triggered by itself. So you have to understand that if you are adding the project name in the current one, that doesn't mean that this one is the upstream one. The other one, that is the downstream one. The one that you are adding, that's the upstream one. So I hope this, by seeing this project relation, the concept of this upstream and downstream would be quite clear and what exactly we are doing. I hope that's also clear. So basically this helps to maintain the relation between the two projects and this is how the one works. So I assure that you would have that confusion when I said that, okay, that would mostly it strikes the one that we are using. That's the main one. So other one will trigger by itself. No, we have to always keep in mind that the project that's mentioned in upstream, that will once you trigger that, then only the next one will trigger. It's not that when you are triggering the downstream project, the upstream will also come by itself. No, it's not like that. So you have to keep this in mind. So I hope these concepts are clear. And as I said, I'm going to be, I'm, like I was here to add more things to my Jenkins. So I hope I've added good things, the important things that needed in Jenkins. In fact, this will help you in interview process as well. If you mention that, okay, I know about the upstream, downstream, the pipelines. Uh, again, you know how to integrate from GitHub. So this gives a good weightage. Basically, we do this in the real time. This is more of the coder or you can say coder point of view, the one who do codings. Mostly they can work on these sections of Jenkins. You have many more things to explore, but these are a few sections that you need to know at least but if you say that I know Jenkins, you said know this of. So that's all in this video. And uh, now this was my last video of this course. So I hope you enjoyed this course. Now I'll come up with some new projects, new sessions, and different languages, uh, maybe in different automation tools, and the same one. So I'll keep uploading on all. Keep watching my videos and subscribe to the channel. Till then, bye bye. Thank you.